Today, I'm going to share with you 10 tips that have really helped me in terms of my production and hopefully can do the same for you. The first thing is to focus on creative mixing instead of technical mixing. So many people get so caught up in the technical side of the mix, that being things like EQ, compression, panning, volume, and they miss out on the creative side of the process, which is actually way more important. Creative mixing is changing the actual tone and texture of the sound, while technical mixing is all about taking the sounds that you already have and making them fit together. When I first started producing, I got so caught up in the technical side of the mix and I was like, if only I could send my stuff to an engineer who could mix it, my stuff would sound way better. I would say 90% of your music sounding really good is the quality of the sounds that you're choosing. Let me show you what I mean. So when I first started producing, I probably just would have tried to EQ this a little bit and just go with it. But then I realized that the professionals are using effects to make the quality of this sound different and the texture of the sound different, just like this. Now to my ears, this sounds a lot more polished and is way more interesting to listen to. These are using some of my favorite effects plugins, Shaper Box on the scratch fill setting, break it down setting, little EQ to leave room for the vocal and the bass instruments, and then a little bit of portal on the not even preset. The second tip is to use less sounds. My goal when I'm producing is to make my beat sound the biggest that I possibly can with the least amount of sounds. When I first started producing, I thought that just adding more tracks would make my mix sound more full and big. But in reality, I was just cluttering it up and making it sound smaller. This is an example of a cluttered loop. All of the parts are in key, but it just sounds muddy and there's a lack of clarity in terms of what to listen to. We have to remember the human ear can only hear like a few things at a time. So you gotta take that into account. Now check it out when I take out these four elements. To my ear, there's way more space now. I know what's going on and I can actually hear an artist on something like this, which is also something that you have to keep in mind is that unless you're making instrumental music, you have to leave space for someone to actually rap or sing on your beat. I think if you're just starting out and making melodies is kind of overwhelming, the easiest place to start is just getting one really good sounding main loop part. This is usually a little riff or a chord progression. Once you have that, you can just duplicate the pattern and layer it with another sound, or you can add little supplemental parts that are just meant to complement that main melody. The third tip is to make your kick louder than your 808. When I first started, when I wanted my bass to just hit really hard, this is what I would do. <laughs> but this is the exact opposite of what you need to do. But I learned that all the punch in the knot comes from the kick, not the 808. The way I like to think about it is having my 808 like here and my kick just sitting on top of it. And to me, this sounds way better. The next tip is to not overthink your arrangement. When I first started out, it was so overwhelming to try to arrange a beat because I had no clue what to do. But then when I realized in reality, all arranging is, is either adding or taking away parts in certain intervals. These intervals usually being four to eight bars. This is meant to help your beat have a sense of progression and not get boring. Here are some things you can try if you're stuck in your arrangement process. Number one is to keep your melody progression the same, but change the pattern of how you're playing it. Number three is to change the drum pocket. People like Eric DOA do this all the time in their songs. He'll go from drums like this. You don't wanna be a big to drums like this. Number four is to try to create a filtered section right before the drop or hook of your song. <laughs> To me, it really helps the beat drop harder. That brings us to number five, which is to use quality drum sounds. A lot of times I can tell amateur beats just by the way their drums hit. Compared to. If drum sound selection is something you struggle with, one, you can go download my free kits in the bio, but if free hard hitting drum kits aren't your thing, I would either go on Reddit and find out what drum kits are popular now, or I would just listen to some of your favorite songs and really analyze what type of sounds that they're using and think of how you could either create or where you could get similar sounds. Number six is to have a production template. Some people think that having a template restricts your creativity, but in my eyes, it does the exact opposite. I like to just think of myself as almost like a painter and I want all of my paint to be available to me at all times. 
times. In this case, my paint or my presets, my plugins, certain mixing chains that I like to use all right here at my fingertips. Now I have mine laid out like this. What I would recommend creating your template is to think of the things that you do all the time. What plugins do you go to? What presets do you use? And then arrange them in a way that makes sense to you. Number seven is to learn DAW shortcuts. And this is something that I wish I had focused on right out of the gate because it is, I would say 10X to 20X my workflow, allowing me to work way faster and ultimately finish more songs. Some shortcuts that I would recommend knowing no matter what DAW you're in are how to save, how to duplicate, how to cut clips, and how to automate. Speaking of automation, that is number eight. Use automation to make your songs more emotional. Automation to me is just creating change over a period of time. As producers, we use this change to help evoke different emotions in ourselves and the listener. When I first started out, I did not automate at all. And I feel like my songs just sounded really flat. They didn't breathe or move at all. You want your beats to kind of be like a movie. You know, you have your intro and it slowly builds up to this and then it just boom, like hits you with this awesome climax. Automation is a big part of it. Tip number nine is to copy your favorite producers. Now, some people think you shouldn't copy at all and that you should just be totally unique and maybe that works for some people. But in my opinion, it's way better to learn the rules before you break them. What I would do is listen to your favorite songs and try to recreate them. Try to learn how to get the certain sound that they have. And then the cool thing about this is if you do it enough over time, ultimately getting your unique sound. Now the last one I think is actually the most important and it's just to take the pressure off of yourself. When I first started out, I got so overwhelmed and compared myself to these big producers that had been doing it for years. And I was like, damn, how can I ever get there? Like, there's no way I'm ever gonna get this good or be able to do what they're doing. I still sometimes even struggle with this, but I think we have to remember that at the end of the day, music is supposed to be fun and music is supposed to create emotion. And if you're highly, highly stressed, it is really, really hard to access emotion. Anytime you start feeling this way, I'd recommend going for a walk or just taking a break, really just anything to regain perspective on yourself and music. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Other than that, I'll see you next time. Peace.